Welcome to the Empowered Women Podcast, celebrating courageous women who have turned their struggles into success. I'm your host, Nicole Ananda, and for the last 20 years as a certified life coach and healing arts professional, I've supported women to live a life of passion, power, and purpose so they can experience more love, joy, and success. So if you're ready to ignite your life, subscribe to The Empowered Woman and become a part of our community where excuses hold no power, resilience reigns, transformation happens, and authentic power is created where wise women lift each other up higher and higher. So today's guest is the beautiful Judith Labert, and she is a 17-year licensed professional counselor, a trauma therapist, holistic health and lifestyle coach. She's a two-time international author, an educator, and a mental wellness advocate. Wow, what a beautiful service you offer to women and i don't know maybe men too to in the world and we would love to hear your story on how you turned any struggles that you've had in your life into success and just kind of tell us your personal story and let us get to know you a little bit better judith and i'm excited because judith and i just met recently and I'm really excited to get to know you as well. I know that you're a powerful human being. So thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. Yeah, awesome. So let's hear about you. Yeah, so my story, um, you know, kind of the summary of it is I was a therapist and learned a lot about trauma and went through some of my own struggles. And, you know, I think sometimes we have those moments of I know better, so it can't happen to me. And so unfortunately, you know, um, I got knocked down a little bit and humbled by through my journey um, to be able to say, no, I'm dealing with some things and it's okay. So there's a lot of, you know, just life events that contributed to me having some physical issues going on, didn't really realize that it was related to anxiety and depression. So, you know, as your therapist, you can't have anxiety and depression, right? Right. So that was kind of my mentality and not really realizing how much what I was not processing was hurting me. Mm. And so through my own process and then kind of in the midst of it, um, I had a call for my mom. Um, I'm in Oregon. My mom was in Wyoming Mm. and she said, can you get here by Saturday? It was Wednesday night. And she was diagnosed with a cancer that um, took her three, three months later. But um, knowing my mom and it kind of helped me dive into some of those emotional components of, okay, I have these books or these resources that I use in therapy, but not really applying them. And so just kind of dove into those a little bit and was like, yeah, so it's the resentment or it's these other things that I know my mom has that when you pinpoint it to the physical issues, it was spot on. And yeah. I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. So I need to um, look at where I'm at because I'm not where I want to be and look at what's going on for me so that those things don't manifest in my my health and my journey. Um, and they already were to some degree. So um, so that really kickstarted um, me just diving in a little bit deeper to do more on somatics. So I love talking about the somatics and dealing with some of those root causes, because whether it's emotional or spiritual or, you know, just something where it's, it could be generational that it's just impacting our bodies. It's impacting our, our minds. And so sometimes we want to do better and we don't always know what the, the block is. Yeah. And sometimes it's these things that we're not really looking at. So yeah. um, I have a lot of clients who come in and they have the health issues, just like the mental health issues, but they have those physical pieces too. And it's like, okay, so what are we not addressing? So and now I'm realizing that more and more that, everybody's got them right it's just that sometimes they don't look quite as big or maybe they're not as impactful yet but they will Mm. so that's been a big piece of my my journey and my learning and Mm. all of the skills that I've learned in probably the last eight years or so have really been focusing on that root cause and how to how to help people feel a little bit bigger and better um talk therapy is great and trauma therapy has its place but you know, um, you have to kind of combine all these different things and have a very unique approach for different people. So that's 
that's kind of me in a nutshell of my journey and why I do what I do. Oh, I love that. You know, it, it brings up some some questions for from me because I've had this conversation with uh, many therapists and some of them are my clients, right? And where they um, are talk therapists and they're noticing just like you um, that there's so many other layers, let's say, to the human system and have often, let's say, referred people to do breath work with me or energy work or just other modalities in support of the work that they're doing. And I'm, I'm, it makes me really curious to understand as a licensed professional counselor, as a trauma therapist, um, what is the approach that let's say is more traditional, let's just call it traditional because right now I think that things are really changing, but mm -hmm. what is that traditional kind of model um, and is it void of some of the somatics or is that, you know, how much is that changing now? And I'm just, I'm just curious about that, you know, cause I do hear that, that quite a bit. Yeah. I think that's a really great question. Um, you know, a lot of people do come in with the mentality of, I just need to talk it out, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't really understand that, you know, I talk about lifestyle. I talk about nutrition. I talk about, you know, what are the emotions doing your nervous system, all these different, you know, breath work, all the different things that, we need to be addressing and we're just not as a culture. And so I think a lot of times we segment things so much mm -hmm. that it's just this, right? It's like, um, I think one of the things that really stood out to me um, in the whole somatic field is one time having somebody say, why, why do we have health insurance, but dental and vision are separate? <laughs> because they're all part of the body, right? And so it's like, you know, what's going on with your heart maybe influencing your eyes. Right. It, you know, or if you had surgery in your mouth, if you had a wisdom tooth taken out or you had something else going on, why is that not impacting the rest of your body? They're not separate, They're you not know, separate. but we treat these things as everything is separate. Mm -hmm. So I think people are starting to kind of get that, you know, that notion of, okay, we are, we are kind of more, <laughs> you know, there's more pieces to this and we're more connected than we know. And so maybe the spiritual does imp impact us more than we know, because that's part of us too. We all have spirit. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's all these different components. And so I think people are starting to become a little bit more aware of like the holistic piece of it. Uh -huh. um, but I think that Western and Eastern medicine piece have been separated so much for so long. It's hard so for people to break out of that mentality. So even in the therapy world, it's, you know, we're just now starting to get people to go, oh, maybe therapy is not so scary. Maybe I can actually, maybe this is beneficial, right? Um, and so then to bridge some of those other gaps, I think is, still coming so yeah that's such a great answer and it it reminded me like recently i went i have this amazing chiropractor and he's also a functional medicine doctor and studied many other things as well and i went in with my son who was having his knee kept locking up so i actually thought it was something going on with his hip or even his feet you know anything around the joint and as a yoga teacher that's how i'd approach it you know like it's got to be the below and he gets him on the table and one of his vertebrae was out and he fixed that really quick, did the thing. And my son's knee just stopped locking up. And I'm like, wow, that's just so amazing, you know? And and I see in his office, you know, the, the chiropractor's office that in his office, they have the spine and, you know, where all the nerves are connecting and what goes where. And it's just like this beautiful map. And so it just, you know, I always tell my son the same thing. I'm like, we're just so, so complicated and we have so many moving parts that it, it's sometimes hard to know where, where everything is rooted from. Um, yeah. That was like a cool example of like, nope, it's in your neck. It has nothing to do with your right. neck, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so we have segmented things, even in yoga, like yeah. as a practitioner of yoga for 20 years, uh, Ayurveda, the study of food was part of the science of yoga, they were never separate. It was the physical body, the, the food body, basically, and all these other components and spirituality all together. And then it came to the West and it was all separated out, like you said. So yoga became just a physical kind of exercise practice, a little bit of spirituality right. in there, a couple of other things in there. But mostly now, if you go to a yoga class, it's treated like a fitness class. And mm -hmm. people don't talk about the sutras anymore. They don't talk about energy that very rarely. You know, unless you're like an older yogi like me, and I might bring in those things because that's what I was taught. But 
Very few people do that anymore. Even mantra, even even mudras, even hand positions and things that were related to acupressure points. Even yeah. Sanskrit was designed to acupressure your, your palate and to be designed to heal your body, which I found oh, fascinating. But we don't know that, you know, we don't know that right. because westernized and consumerized and all the things. So yes. yeah. And in well, order and I'm, a, I'm also a Christian practitioner too. So having yeah. that bridge of, you know, what's right and wrong uh, in some of those circles of, you know, it's even a little bit deeper for a lot of people to be able to dissect that. Right. Because, you know, um, my approach is that, you know, we're made of energy, God made energy, there's nothing wrong with it. And we need to treat it as something that is, you know, sacred like that, because we, we are, we're created in God's image and his energy. And so when people have that um, resistance of, oh, this is like voodoo or something, it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, well, anything can be taken in the wrong context. I mean, speaking of voodoo, right. It's like, you know, if you are actually intending to cause harm to somebody, yeah. that's different than if your intentions are, you know, pure. Absolutely. And so prayer is the same way, right? So it's like prayer is energy. Absolutely. I think you brought up a good a good point, which is intention. You know, anything done with intention is there's a power in the intention, right? And so setting intention as a yoga teacher, we're always setting intention. We set intentions at the beginning of every class. That's what we've been kind of taught to do. And I always took that as like a very important time to connect, you know, what is, what is my actual intention? And when we do that as a daily practice, it really shifts our lives, doesn't it? It's oh, yeah. a powerful thing for manifesting what we want and setting goals and desires and all, all of those things. So, so tell me what, what are your books? You're, you're two, you have two time. Wow two-time international author so does that mean you have two books that went international and let me hear yep. what they're oh, yeah so they're both book collaborations that i was a part of and a lot of them um or they both have the same kind of theme of how do we become empowered or what's our story of overcoming um so the first one's called absolute will and so it's it is a lot of it's more of that health journey piece and that overcoming. And then um, the other one is starfish stories. So it's a collection. So I've got, you, know, you can see them here, um, absolute will and starfish stories, but book collaborations. So partnering with some other really amazing women um, who were telling their stories. And so, yeah, they're, um, yeah, just fun, fun, inspirational stories. I think that can encourage a lot of people, especially if, you know, they're, we're all at different levels on our health journey and seeing where some people have come from and what brought people through and learning different techniques and tools or mindset pieces that have helped and encouraged that yeah. process. So it's amazing. So it's really what powerful. are some of the, um, like you were talking about the stories, I think it's also really amazing to tell through story, um, you know, what people go through. And I'm, I'm curious about the somatic piece that you mentioned. Um, and what you've been studying there and uh, how you go about using um, those tools in your practice. Yeah, that's kind of a big one. Ooh, love it though. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I think once I figured out some of the somatic, um, you know, I learned about emotion code and body code. So you're oh, probably yeah. familiar with those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so especially coming from that Christian stance, I had to do a lot of research to see, okay, what does this actually look like? What does this mean? How does this fit for me? Can I make it work? Um, and a lot of the emotion code, body code, there's another, there's a Christian version that's basically the same. And so, you know, whatever, it's like, okay, it's all the same. It's all energy, right? So once huh. I figured that out and I was like, there's no shame, there's no whatever in this and just understanding that, you know, the Bible talks about generational curses. And I think a lot of the generational curses that the Bible speaks of are those things that are passed down that wow. might be that resentment or bitterness or that physical issue that never got resolved. Those are all things that impact us and they can be, you know, 20 generations back. It could be from your, your parents or your grandparents. We have no idea sometimes how far back those things go. Um, so 
that's really powerful to be able to try to integrate where I can, um, especially when you've got some of these clients who they're like, I have no idea where some of this stuff is coming from. It's like, it's probably not yours. Um, so let's dive into that. Um, some of it too, there's belief code, um, which is a similar version, but it's a little bit more targeting those beliefs and where they stem from mm -hmm. and very trauma informed in that sense of from zero to seven is when we have most of our memories, most of our um, wiring, if you will, is created in those formative years. And so a lot of our beliefs, so when we have something that we're challenged by, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Probably 90% of it, if not more, came from age seven and below. Yeah. And some of that might just be that, you know, residual type of stuff from families. Sometimes it might actually be our own beliefs. You know, you get ignored as a child and then you believe I don't matter, you know, mm -hmm. or there's something like that that um, stands out to you. So uh, when you're in my practice, well, how does that belief translate today? Right. You know, so if your belief is I don't matter, well, what are the things that are coming into your life or not coming into your life? What are you doing and not doing because of that belief? So there's a whole process on how to kind of free you from that and change that belief. Mm -hmm. Um and part of that's that energy work. Um, another piece that I love is I use a bioresonance scanner uh -huh. uh, that targets frequency. And um, it can look at all the body systems. And so anything from, you know, your liver to see how your liver is functioning, your blood. So it kind of, in a sense, can, doesn't have to, but can replace like blood work or a lot of different tests that the medical system offers. They can work very well together as well. Um, but my favorite is the voice scans because our voice, our tones, right? I always think of like Ross from Friends and he's like, I'm fine, I'm fine, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you know, he's not fine based on his tone. And, you know, so it pulls out some of these tones and looks at the correlating emotions and where they're hiding in the body and what the most common things are that you're specifically um, identifying as being maybe out of balance. Mm. So that could be a nutritional components, that could be, you know, like you need chiropractic or, you know, some okay. other things. So give some really great recommendations and then voice tunes to listen to to, in a sense, reprogram the brain and build those neural pathways to strengthen that um, emotional component. So, so it's actually like a biofeedback things. machine where it's actually it's giving. Similar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and then there's a new component that I'm going to be adding in as well. That's a little bit more like the biofeedback um, that targets by using headphones and the sound waves to reprogram the brain um, for specific elements. So like if you're struggling with anxiety or um, PTSD or even some different health issues that can focus on re reprogramming the brain. Um, like, for example, like using your son's knee, for example, right, um, when he was probably complaining about the pain of it. Well, the more we complain about it, the more it's rewiring our brain. So that even when we're not really in pain, our brain's like, are you in pain? Right. You're in pain, right? Like so, the so, pain too, right? You can yeah. get real pain in your body also, and or phantom pain, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it has a chance to help rewire those um, pieces so that it, you're not really focused on it in the same way too, so. Is it more like um, positive re re like affirmations that are going in? Um, it's kind of like binaural B, yeah. um, but you can throw in affirmations, you can throw in all these other components as well that just, you know, I mean, sometimes that's what we need, right, is yes. more of the affirmation side, just as much as, you know, just those regular vibrations or frequencies. So, yeah, um, you can layer those effects and get more strong results. As a, as oh, a I love result. that. So. I love that you're using all of this technology and that you're able to incorporate that into your practice because there's so much, right, technology that's coming out, especially related to sound and frequency, yeah. which I find to be really fascinating. And, right. right, like really getting, if it really is energy, then that is the key, right, to, to find the frequency of that healing. It's like the Rife machines that were created mm -hmm. Um, and then but he was killed. Wasn't he killed? Um, for so, his, yeah. his knowledge. Um, but I that knowledge. We're coming to you again. It's like, oh, yeah, frequency healing, you know, getting to the vibration yeah. uh, that needs to be healed. I find that fascinating about the voice and the vocal toning. I've never actually heard 
of that technology. That's fascinating. I'd love to come experience that with you. <laughs> well, the fun thing is, is that um, other than the voice piece, I mean, you send me a voice clip and I can do it. Um, but all the rest of it is energy. So your energy doesn't have to be in the same room as me to be right. able to experience all, all of these different, uh, you know, effects. And so that's even, you know, uh, very mind blowing for a lot of people. It's like, how does, how does this happen? You know, but I like to explain it um, almost like when you have it, your cell phone, right? How does your cell phone or even fax machines, fax machines are even more mind blowing to me because it's like, how does, how does it know what to print on the paper? Because I'm in a different state or a different location than you. So it's not coming from my, you know, I'm not typing this out. How does it know how to get this information? It's right. because it's got this number programmed and it's basically this energy wave, this, you know, frequency that's coming through that's making this happen, you know? Yes. And so how do I call you directly on your phone? It's the same thing. It's like your number has that frequency. So I'm not getting, you know, the guy down the street, I'm getting you. Um, yeah. And so it's the same idea. You program it in and it's like, I can target you um, with, you know, yeah, it's still kind of mind blowing. I don't understand all the science behind it, but <laughs> sure. that's the thing is it's like, you can do it from anybody anywhere. And it's like, how did you know that? <laughs> it's like, I didn't know that. <laughs> it, so, it's, fascinating. Oh. it's like the quantum field, right? We're just really yeah. understanding that there's these ones and zeros and that. And I, I even describe that when I'm working with clients because I use the chakra system as like the linear map for my understanding with my clients of like belief systems zero to seven and just what the emotional code, I guess, is, you know, what's the pattern of behavior or belief and how to unpack that, you know, through the architecture of, of that blueprint. And, it, and it's really fascinating, you know, it's really fascinating. And I'll say, you know, when we're, a child we are recording our chakras just like no, nobody knows what cd-roms are anymore but a cd-rom our age group knows what a cd-rom is but the yeah. cd-rom it's the same thing right there was music recorded on that or there was information recorded on that even a record add grooves right so it's that same idea so all the modeling is doing that all of our religious upbringing or education or what have you it's all just going boom into that chakra and so if we look at those chakras as those recorders then it makes so much sense to just know that like yeah we were we came out blank basically except for in yoga they call it sanskaras but let's say our past life experiences or our generational trauma there is some of that imprinting they know that from epigenetics, like the Holocaust survivors and oh, their yeah. kids have all of those imprints of survival or, you know, trauma. Um, and you can turn the switches on and off. I do believe that. I do believe that we can turn the switches on and off and we can believe it or not if we want to. Um, but we do have to face it. We do have to, like, really look at it. Right. And address it and decide um, are we willing to still believe this or are we not? And a lot of the times we can create a lot of excuses, right? Like, oh, it's it's that thing. It's this thing from the past or it's their fault or it's that thing. And we, we need to, for healing, really own it, claim it, take personal responsibility yeah. for it and just say, okay, I'm done with that story. I don't need to make that excuse anymore. I'm really ready to let it go or I'm really willing your your book is absolute will. I'm w I'm willing to let it go. I, I'm curious, yeah, about absolute will. Is that title? That's an interesting title. Is it a lot about willpower and the power yeah. of will to heal? Um, yeah, kind of the um, yeah, the perseverance that comes from whatever journey that we're on. So you know, there's yeah, all sorts of different stories between emotional pieces and physical and just that willpower that comes into play of you know for me it was I know I had a moment where you know just a lot of stuff in my family where I was just like this is hard and I'm struggling and I think my husband was like I can't live like this anymore like this is hard you know and it was one of those things where I was like oh so this is really impacting everybody else too and it was that for me it was that like okay, I need to kind of get my together here and kind of make some progress and figure out what, what's going on. And I need to make some things happen, you know? And so I think, you know, we all have whatever that breaking point is or that point where we're just like, okay, enough's enough. Let's just do this. We need to 
move forward and make something happen or create some shift in some way. And, um, you know, so I think that's what a lot of the stories reflect. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, it, it, it is that, right? Cause there I'll have clients sometimes who aren't really to, willing to let things go. And there's only so far you can go um, in that scenario. And it is usually the, I've had enough, I've had enough, I'm ready, I'm ready. You know, you're really going to find transformation and alchemy when, when a person's ready, right? Right. That's really what it boils down to. And not everybody's yeah. ready when, they might think they're ready and then then you realize they're not ready <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well that's the coaching side of things too right where it's like you know how, like how do we walk you through this to see how ready you are and you know when you're working with somebody that's that's the challenge is okay how yeah. you know you want to go so far but not really or how you know what is what do you want this to look like we can't always cherry pick the pieces you know, That's it's like right. diet, right? You know, you want to change certain things in your life, then you might have to change your diet. And it's like, but I don't want to give up cookies because how, you know, or candy because how are coming or something, right? So people always have those excuses of, well, how bad do you really want this? You know, how yeah. how important yeah. is this? So yeah, yeah, we all have those those pieces. So I love that. How important is this? Because it, yeah, yeah. If it's not a priority, then it won't shift anyway. And so really like kind of dialing down into the, into the core priorities for the particular shift that they're looking for at that moment. Right. And it is right. interesting when there's a change or a shift and how that ripples into so many areas of your life. And then all these other things that were created with that particular pattern now to start unraveling, right. Whether it's the relationship or the parenting style or, the way that you were habitually doing X, Y, and Z. And, and it, it really is interesting how we just are unconscious about certain things. And then we have these epiphanies and then all these things change. And then, right. It's like the growth curve. It, it, it's a fascinating yeah. transformation and, and uh, the unraveling of the pieces. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really yeah. cool. And so um, for the women or, you know, primarily women are, are on these podcasts. It is called The Empowered Woman. I'm curious with that title, The Empowered Woman, um, what you could say to women out there, you know, knowing what you know now and uh, maybe at moments of, of your life where you didn't feel empowered. Now, I would imagine you feel much more empowered as you've gone through your own process. Is there any advice, any Anything you'd like to tell women out there, like who, who maybe don't feel empowered right now, who might lack confidence or self-doubt right now? I think one of the biggest things that I think a lot of people are starting to learn and come back to is paying attention to that intuition that we have, right? Because we're all given this intuition, this um, gift, right, if you will, and a lot of times that gets squashed, but those are the things that tell us what's okay. That's what helps create our boundaries of what's okay and not okay, right? And is when we have that feeling of like, oh, I don't really like that. Well, a boundary was crossed. We need to pay attention to those things. Um, if something's okay or not okay, if it feels good or something's right or wrong. So I think, um, you know, like one other area for me that really stood out is, I mean, when we look at the medical system, right? Um, I just remember there were things that were not okay or not right, but I didn't really know how to express it. Or maybe I felt like I can't express it because, you know, they know better, right? Because they're educated. And I think that's the, the common thing where it's like, well, if you go into the hospital or you go see somebody who is more educated than you, they must know more than you, right? And it's like, well, you need to work together to figure out what's actually going on because they don't know all the things. They don't know how I'm feeling all the time. It's not this blanket, you know, situation of, one size fits all and so you know even when it came to you know vaccinations and things like that are a big topic right mm -hmm. and I knew that when I first had my my oldest and I didn't know how I felt about that I was just like I don't I don't understand why this is happening like why do I the why does she need anything you know because if if we're created and our bodies are healthy then why why do we need this and so but I didn't question it I mean I should have and so then there's just a lot of things where it's like, was that a good choice or a bad choice, right? And so I think paying attention to, you know, and asking the questions that we need to ask so that we can get more answers, whether it's for ourselves, for others, for creating boundaries, for any of that stuff helps us just really speak our voice and understand who we are 
Uh, and I think that's a big piece of, you know, just kind of figuring out like, where are we on this journey? Um, it's, there's a lot that we don't always know until we ask those questions or until we pay attention to those pieces that sometimes we're not paying attention to. So um, whether it's the emotion or the intuition, those are probably the two big things that we need to learn to pay more attention to. Wow. I love that was so powerful what you said. And I couldn't agree more. And I was one of those people that just blindly would follow medical advice yeah. because that's what my parents did. Right. And I just didn't question right. it. And it wasn't until much later on when I started learning about energy systems and so forth that I was like, hmm, you know, I don't know that I agree or I don't know that that feels right. And I just love that you brought in the intuition. I think it's more more than ever. And I believe that COVID was part of this, actually, part of the awakening to all of this as well, which really showed us that we could have a voice, that we could intuit, that we could find other ways of managing our health care. Um, not that the medical system is bad or wrong, but that it's just one system. And there are other, so many other systems also. And to have, you know, uh, the opportunity to really question and to look past maybe one version of, of care and get a team. You know, I love how you called yourself a, a mental wellness advocate because an advocate is advocating. And I learned this during my birth uh, of, my, of my son that I needed an advocate to be with me when I got to the hospital, which was my doula and my midwife. And they advocated for my health. And I felt so empowered in that process of being advocated for and just they knew what my my wishes were and they could be a voice for me when I was, I don't even know where I was, in liminal space with God, trying to figure out what my body was doing um, and having that experience, but to have somebody there by my side, you know, and that's so powerful and people need that. And I, I think that the system, the systems are changing and hopefully like a person like yourself, who's a part of both systems, you know, we'll call them holistic and, and medical Western uh, and Eastern and bridging that gap. And I feel like, you know, that's, that's such a powerful place to, to sit and to be in. So yeah. thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. 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 I, I totally agree. It's, you know, I think it's more prominent than ever. And so, you know, people need to figure out what's important to them. And there's a lot of information out there, which is both good and bad, right? Because <laughs> it's not always accurate information, but I think when we pay attention to our intuition and we kind of know what's going on, we can help weave some of those pieces out um, that may not be as accurate too. So it's really right. important to not just, you know, do what what we think is right or what we think that says or, you know, it's like paying attention to how does this actually feel? Is this, yeah. is this right for me? Yeah, our emotional guidance system. Mm, so powerful. Well, um, as we wrap this up, I would love for women to be able to connect with you. And can you tell us um, just how to connect with you? If there's anything that you're offering um maybe it's a clarity call or something i don't know i'm whatever you have please let us know what that is and yeah so you can find me my my website is just judithlabert.com um so a lot of resources on there i have some good freebies um, i have an anxiety nutrition link um, guide that's on my website as well that's a really great little guide to piece some of those pieces together of that connection. Um, and then anybody who wants to connect further, learn a little bit more about what I do, I, I do have some of those calls that you can um, get set up on, or even I do the inner voice scans for free for people who want to know a little bit more too. So happy to do one for you. And wow, how exciting. <laughs> I love that. I would love to do that. It sounds great. So, yeah. 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 Great. So we'll have all of your info in the show notes. So anybody that wants to connect with you can have that information and ask her questions, check out her freebies, get some fun things from her. And, you know, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate having you here and getting to know you so much better. Um, this is our, our little tea connect and, and fun time and play time too. And so it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast 
And I look forward to like really hanging out with you in person at some of our networking events that we get to go yeah. to and just really supporting, you know, this valley and, and people who are, do you, do you connect with people? I'm actually curious globally and online as well. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of all over. Love it. So, yeah. Great. So thanks for supporting all, all the women. All yeah. Over the place. yeah. So thank you so much for coming on here. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in just subscribing uh, to this channel and seeing other women that have come on here, we've had so many amazing, beautiful, powerful, empowered women guests and uh, just some incredible discussion. So please subscribe to the channel and we wish you well. Have a great, great day. Thank you so much, Judith, for coming on here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.